In today's video, we're gonna check out some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. When certain people walk in the room, you feel it, right? Do you yeah. feel like everyone has an energy field? I mean, we know scientifically proven everyone has an energy field. And what I learned when I went to classes at MIT for applied neuroscience, let's say I'm in the, we're in the room together, right? Let's say you're stressed out and your cortisol levels are spiking. That hormone is leaving out of your body, some of it, on your electromagnetic field and winding and interacting with my field and your cortisol is coming into my body. So your anxiety, your anger, your frustration could literally directly affect me by your hormones literally going down my field into my body and raising my levels. But if you were in a high frequency, high vibration, the opposite can happen. And those hormones can come into my body and raise my vibration. So, you know, when you say, when that person walks in a room, it just lights up. That's actually a true statement. You can walk into a room and you can take somebody who's low and bring them to a higher level. Yeah, it really makes you think about who you want to surround yourself with. I used to surround myself with low vibration people yeah. and I was broke, yeah. to be Listen, honest. You got to stay away from people that have a problem for every solution. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. One thing I do know, if you run across someone with very low vibration or low energy, man, you can feel that. It like sucks the energy out of you. When someone is gloomy or depressed and they're around you, you can feel that depression. It's just like there's this void just sucking in all of your happiness and energy right to someone that has a low vibration. I, I, I feel like people have the ability to absorb people's energy and give people energy and we just do not know how to fully control that. But I definitely know when someone is depressed around me, I, it's like I can feel it on my shoulders. Stop, stop what you're doing right now. This video could change your entire life outlook. You know what lava looks like, right? Like we know what lava looks like as it's hot. It runs kind of like a river finding its level. Do you think that lava would ever form sacred, you know, geometrical shapes like hexagonal shapes or anything? Seriously, just to make sure that nobody thinks that this is possible, that hexagonal shapes would be formed from volcanoes or lava, look at it when it's hardened. Look, 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 like a black river or something. I've shown you what lava looks like cooled and hot from a volcano. And we're told that this was formed from a volcano. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Remember Avatar? The huge tree that was cut down? Um, might have been a little bit of reality mixed in with that science fiction, but look how level this is on top, and is this sawdust from... It? Now, before I start reprogramming your brain... Look, it makes a lot more sense, man, than lava. Seriously, like, spring wood, summer wood, hexagonal shapes, like... <laughs> you thought it was one example? No. These trees were all over. Look at this. Yeah, look at that. Would you look at that? More hexagonal. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the root system. We come in. This guy built. This guy owns this. He lives in a tree. This has got to be insane energy. This guy's gonna live forever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the roots. See the roots. You'll see the roots going up, and then the tree was cut down. Yeah, I don't even know how, I don't know how big these things were. I have no idea. Pretty odd, like, formation. <laughs> like, completely level on the top. Maybe like it was cut down by a giant axe. <laughs> Not seeing it? I don't know how. I don't know how you wouldn't, this is an axe. See? Easy. Easy to understand. The trees are just the beginning of the lies, though, if you're new here. <laughs> While I've got your attention, global warming is not real. The sea levels aren't rising, guys. The Earth is also flat. There's no convexity to the Earth. Rail guns can hit targets 100 miles away. That's 6,666 feet of missing curvature, guys. That's a weird number. The sun moves. The moon moves. The stars move. But the Earth is completely stationary. Like, just look at flight path landing. Seriously. This was an emergency flight path landing. How did they land thousands of miles in Los Angeles quickly? Like, that would take, like, hours. But on a flat Earth map, <laughs> probably flying right over it. I do like the idea that those mountainous terrains are just old trees. But the, the questions that I have about them is this... I do not necessarily believe it because, one, like this individual said, they're completely smooth on top. 
but when you cut down a tree with an axe it's never a smooth cut it's always a chunked out cut that's splintered and has different levels to it unless whoever cut down these massive trees could just cut it in one fail swoop and it's a perfect cut there would be imperfections and it wouldn't just be a flat surface but also it makes me wonder what causes those complete flat surfaces i have always found it to be very interesting that those those could potentially be trees because they really do look like trees i would just think that there would be more evidence of the equipment that cut them down we would find more of them other than just one axe on top of the tree stump but I, I don't know. What do you guys think about this theory? This is a pretty crazy one, but it's a really cool one. I enjoy it a lot. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to the people that are subscribed to the channel, thank you so much for being a part of the channel. And for the ones that are not subscribed, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. And don't forget, if you want to be a part of Questions for DK, where I answer personal questions, questions about conspiracy theories or theories in general, leave a comment starting with question for DK so that I can find it in the YouTube search results and make a future video answering those questions at the end of the video. And stick around to the end of this video where I answer five or six of those questions. Do you know what tribulation is? Yeah? Do you think it's happened yet? Well, I do. And I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to prove it to you with your own eyes and the stars you see every night. Because I think we're living in a time where the stars already fell to the earth like figs dropping from a tree, just like it says in the Bible in Revelation 6.13. And if we're living in a time after the stars have already fallen to earth, then we're also living in a time where Satan has been loosed to deceive all the nations of earth. And what better way to deceive us than to not only fool us of where we live, but also when we live. Because when you look into it, there are a lot of records of stars falling from the sky in 1833 for hours upon hours upon hours. And yes, we still see stars in the sky, but could they be a deception from the enemy? Could they be Satan's tool to confuse us? You see, if you still think you live on a globe and you don't know there's water above us, above the firmament, you're going to have a hard time with this. But if you're a flat earther, continue to follow along. Have a little look at what they were able to produce in a lab. This star in a jar is made when a sound wave is passed through a small bubble inside a flask of liquid. And this sound wave makes the bubble do something remarkable. First it expands, then it collapses. And this collapse happens so violently that vapor molecules trapped inside the bubble slam together and heat up so much that the bubble gives off an incredible burst of heat and light, several thousand times a second, giving the appearance of a star. I need you to keep that video in mind, and I'm going to come back to it in just a second. But first, I need to show you, and if you haven't seen my videos before, this might be hard for you. But the fakeness of the world, the CGI of the world, the deception of the world, they have to put it right in plain sight. So how do they do that? They use dogs. They put dogs in things, kind of as a revelation of the method. So all the NASA smoke, all the nonsense of Tesla and space, they put little dog images, and I have found them. And I found them in the stars, too. The real stars. I want you to follow this. And because I want you to be able to do this and prove it to yourself, go to YouTube, type in Nikon camera stars, and go to your very first one. That's what I did. So once you go to this video or any video of a star through a Nikon camera that's not NASA-based, you go and you find these dog images. Here's one. They're literally all over. One in the corner here, little face. And once you see them, you can't unsee them. And they're not just random, and it's not like looking at an ink blot test. They're there because the stars are part of Satan's deception. So we don't realize when we are, and we don't realize that tribulation has already happened, and we're in Satan's short season, and he's here to deceive us and turn our backs on God. He wants us to turn our backs on God. Look at that perfect dog face right there. Guys, I know this could be mind-blowing, unbelievable, but there are dogs in there because it's their revelation of the method that the stars aren't here. 
because the stars, they're down here with us. The stars are angels and there are fallen angels among us. And they're the stars, the movie stars. It's why they call them stars. It's literally truth right in plain sight. Movie stars. Stars are angels. Stars are fallen angels. And the fallen angels are here with us. They're these people. Watch this. They are literally undying beings down here with us. And they want to be worshipped. So the best way they can be worshipped is by being movie stars. Because that's who, in today's society, that's who we worship. Look at these guys. You can find endless pictures of old pictures. And these aren't like, these aren't CGI. These aren't AI. These are actual pictures. And you can go verify that yourself. The stars are fallen angels, guys. And I know that's really, really tough for some people to wrap their heads around. But it's true. And they're here among us. And the stars up in the night sky are literally nothing more than technology. Probably the sound waves being projected up there somehow like that star in a jar to keep us not knowing where we are and when we are. But once you know where and when, you know what's coming and you know that all the biggest thing to do is to focus on good and kindness and love and humility and God and step away from all the evil. Step away from turning your back on God because that's what Satan and his little season is all about, trying to turn souls away from God. And if you think all this is nonsense and I'm just doing it for views, well, go check out my Statue of Liberty post on how the Statue of Liberty is actually a giant statue of Lucifer. Because this is Lucifer from 1797. And if you don't realize, the Satan and Lucifer worship is all over the place with all the fallen stars doing this nonsense. So choose God. Not Lucifer. I, I really enjoy these type of conspiracies or theories. I really think that they're interesting, especially the fallen stars ones. I think that is an interesting concept. I just recently have learned that it is a potential possibility that movie stars are the quote unquote fallen stars. I don't know if I necessarily believe that, but it is a good concept because there is stars, movie stars or TV stars, film stars all across the world and different nationalities. So who's to say that maybe those aren't fallen angels that are just trying to reclaim their fame and become praised and worshipped again as they were way back in the day. And as far as the dog images go, I do see some images of dogs here and there in the stars, but I don't know if I necessarily believe that they're just putting images of dogs to falsify this concept. And the last thing that I thought was really cool was the glass vial that they basically made a little star inside of it out of water and sound frequencies that was really cool what do you guys think about some of these topics i would really like to hear your input because there was a lot to break down on this video in particular perhaps these people who say they've been beyond the ice wall are schizophrenic but that isn't stopping them from getting with their friends and going to south america and then sailing all the way to antarctica and sending me videos of just them being over there one of them just recently told me, and this is a new person, that they're going to sail all the way down through here, past the ice wall, and then somehow get through the scorched waste, whatever these are, I don't even know what they are, and go to the real lands of Mars, which is on the next map I'm going to show you. So if you didn't know, according to Flat Earth lore, there's supposed to be another dome right next to ours, which is actually the other planets, but they're actually, they're actually domes, and, and you can get through through these giant ice walls that are even bigger than the ice walls that we know that are around us. And if you zoom out on this entire map, you'll see like a hundred different places. Yeah, see, look at all these. This is apparently what like all the whole universe is. All right, so this new guy that I have not talked about on this account yet just told me that he doesn't have the right technology to go past the ice wall but he sent me this blueprint of something that he's designing that will apparently take him past there. If anyone could tell me what all this means, you take a screenshot right now. There's also this one, but it's supposed to be some type of submarine. Oh, and he also sent me video of when he went to Antarctica a few months ago. 
and he saw what he said was the ice wall down there. He said they weren't able to go any further because of an invisible force field that is apparently being powered in the Grand Canyon with some type of sediment that exists only there. And there's a secret hidden, hidden military base that he's trying to infiltrate and get rid of some kind of stone that is stopping him from going over there. And he said he figured this out by doing some golden ratio calculations. And so this, the Grand Canyon apparently is some like center of the earth or something. But yeah, what do you think? Is this guy telling the truth or is it all fiction? I I really find that the ice wall theory extremely fascinating. The simple fact that we might have an ice wall around us here on earth, our portion of the bubble is just one of many that are on this same planet. And if there's not a movie or a storybook about this, we need to make one because this would be an epic adventure. Have you ever encountered another entity or something? In remote viewing, yeah. I saw one guy that was like, I referred to him as the keeper of the DNA. Somebody way up the ladder in the Galactic Command Center that had a vault of DNA. And so they'd go, we got a planet that's this far from the sun. The gravity is this. The oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen level is this. And he could take DNA off the shelf and say, okay, we'll make a creature that will live there. And then he, they'd introduce it. And that wow. was his job to have the mixture for the right conditions or to create the conditions on the planet, terraform the planet. Yeah. That guy moved me when I was looking at him. I, I got real emotional. Like, wow, this is very powerful. I mean, Really on. To be able to remote view to a distant galaxy or somewhere where there's an individual that you call the DNA collector or whatever he's called, and it's a whole different entity that's their job is to mix DNA, put it on a planet that is adaptable to that DNA. That's pretty fascinating. What do you guys think about this story? I don't know if I necessarily believe it, but it's a pretty interesting one nonetheless. How did people sleep in the Middle Ages? You might think, as usual, they went to bed in the evening and got up in the morning. But it wasn't quite like that. In Geoffrey Chaucer's work, The Canterbury Tales, as well as in many other sources, the concept of the first and second sleep is mentioned. Apparently, people in the Middle Ages went to bed around 8 to 9 p.m. and woke up at 11 p.m. This happened naturally, without alarms. From 11 p.m. until around 1 a.m., they engaged in various activities, cleaning, cooking, conversations, or prayers. Then, the inhabitants of the Middle Ages would go back to sleep and wake up at 6 a.m. Often, the entire family slept in one bed. The girls would sleep on one side closer to the wall, followed by the mother and father, then the sons. Sometimes, a lost guest would join this company. They would lie at the edge of the bed and, out of propriety, were not supposed to touch anyone or move around too much. Oh, there you go. If you wanted to know how they slept in the Middle Ages. 35 million year old lizards were found perfectly preserved in amber. This discovery was in Myanmar and they found 12 lizards and a ton of insects in this amber. Despite what scientists previously thought about how lizards evolved, they found a lot of diversity in this 35 million year old tree sap and realized they were wrong. A lot of these fossils looked like they just died today. And they thought that these specific types of lizards only evolved millions of years later. But still, there they were, fossilized, perfectly preserved. Their scales were still on them. This is actually insane. There were many chameleons, and they had weak jaws, just like chameleons do now, which means that the tongue going forward and catching the prey like a little rubber band, that had already developed over 35 million years ago. They did not think that it had developed that long ago. They also found ants and centipedes along with the lizards, and they believe that the lizards were preying on these insects. 35 million years old. It's crazy. Makes you wonder what other things scientists have been wrong about. Follow for more tea. Hey, that's pretty cool. 35 million year old ants? And those ants didn't look no different than what they do today. Those are one of my worst enemies. I hate ants. And to think they were probably just as bad, if not worse, 35 million years ago. Chrissy is home alone with her son when he keeps looking at the corner of the room. Where's your favorite place to go? What do you see? 
Es ist so viel noch ein Herr. Es ist so viel noch ein Herr. In der Zeit. You see what? A bad thing. A bad thing? A bad thing. Never. What does it look like? A ghost. A ghost? It is one. No, no, there's no ghosts. No ghosts here. Ghosts be gone. I want to see a hand here. Uh, mommy, go in my room. It's not scary in my room. It's not scary in your room? Mm -hmm. Well, you need to stop acting weird. It's scary in here. It's not scary in here. It's a scary thing floating in the house. There's a scary thing floating? Mm -hmm. Where? The house. Baby, there's nothing there. Yes, it is. No, there's not. Look, it's kind of sunny. Go in my room. Try to go in mommy. Go in my room. Think it's savvy. Wanting to protect his mom, he insists they go to his room, as there's nothing scary there. Uh, mommy, come with me. Okay. Nothing scary. Mommy, I love you. Oh, what is another like? What is another animal like? I don't know. What does it look like? Uh, something else. After uploading, thousands of people flooded the comments saying that her son was clearly seeing something just beyond the wall, and others claiming that they too have had similar experiences with their children. What do you believe? Where's your favorite place to go? What do you see? I see something behind I don't know. When I see videos like this, I don't know if they're real or fake. I, I genuinely think that this is a real video. I do not think that the kid's actions were manipulated to say the things that he was saying. You never know with the internet. But it did seem really genuine to me. Very well-spoken kid. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that kids can actually see paranormal activity? you think that this child's seen a ghost? Or do you think that this was just a hoax video? Have you ever wondered about the creation story in the book of Genesis and why God was able to walk with Adam in the cool of the day? Well, what I'm about to share with you is a rereading of this story with some of the original uh, language preserved to understand particularly what these beings were. And yes, I said beings. Now, spoiler alert, this is not the story of mysticism like I grew up understanding where God breathed and spoke into the universe and created all things. That's a completely different version is that kind of mystical in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God type of understanding. Now, this one is actually out of Genesis and it deals with the word Elohim which are the powerful ones. This is a Hebrew word that denotes the gods. You see, these Elohim are presented in many different mythologies, including the Anunnaki mythologies out of Samaria, Babylonia, and Akkadia. These are some of the oldest stories we have on the planet. And the more you study mythology, the more connections you see between all of these ideas. And the idea that in some distant past, something came down from the heavens or out of another dimension and began to make with what was here. I can't believe I'm saying this, but they have just done what in the UK? Oh my days. So, a lot's been going on in the UK the last few months, year. This probably tops it as one of the craziest things they've done. So they banned A-levels and said that everybody has to do maths and English till they're 18. They said they were gonna ban babies, but they just taxed them. And now they are paying influencers to tell migrants not to come to the UK. <laughs> Honestly, please let me know your thoughts on this. So the Home Office said they have set aside a hundred thousand pounds of our taxpayer money to pay influencers to literally post videos telling 
people to not come to the UK illegally. Apparently they are looking at influencers as well in Egypt and Iraq and are going to pay these people £5,000 each, 5,000 great British pounds, to post a video telling their followers in their country don't come to the UK illegally. I'm actually, I'm so confused. But please, as always, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Hit that follow button and I will keep you updated. I'm actually kind of surprised that America hasn't done something kind of similar. It just makes me think, what are the conversations that go down to the influencers by these governments or whoever it is that's providing the money to have the influencers advertise to not come into the country if you're illegal. It's got to be some pretty crazy conversations that go down behind closed doors on that one. All right, let's answer some questions from questions for DK. Question one, have you ever had a paranormal experience and what was it? Very good question. I have had a couple of paranormal, if you want to call them that, experiences. Me personally, I'm not 100% sure to classify them as a real paranormal experience, but I'll give you one for an example. When I was a kid around 10 years old, 10 to maybe 11, my uncle in the family, unfortunately his life was taken by another individual. I was completely unaware of that. And at the time, I was in South Carolina. And this took place in Michigan. So it was near Christmas time. It was mid December. And we had to take a spontaneous trip to Michigan. And I thought it was just for Christmas time because my family kind of liked to take a Christmas vacation to Michigan to visit the rest of the family. I did not know what happened to my uncle happened and again i was a very young individual and i do not remember anyone telling me about it and i can i remember very specifically that my mom was pretty protective over whatever the information was that she received on the phone for us to go to michigan well on the way to michigan we stopped at a hotel in ohio i believe it was and i remember very vividly when we got to that hotel it was extremely late at night we went to bed. My grandma was there and my mom was there. And I was sleeping in the bed with my grandmother while my mom was in the other bed. And I remember waking up and I could hear something at our hotel room door. And it kind of scared me a little bit because I was a kid, you know, and I didn't know what crazy creepy things could have happened at the hotel. Well, I hear this noise coming from the hotel door and I'm looking at it and I'm just laying on, I'm just laying in the bed and I'm looking at the door cause I can see it. And next thing I know, and this sounds completely ridiculous. I know it does. The next thing I know, I see mist and fog rolling underneath the door. And the next thing you know, my uncle just right out of the fog, just peer, appears out of the ground and he's just waving at me. He's waving and he's he, he is tipping his hat because that's something my uncle always did. He always wore a cowboy hat whenever he farmed and he would always tip his hat. And he tipped his hat and then he went into the air conditioner vent and just got sucked into it and disappeared. And I remember waking my grandma up and I'm like, and I'm not going to use my uncle's name, but I was like, Grandma, uncle was here, uncle was here. And my grandma was really upset that I was saying that. She's like, why would you say that? You should know better than to say that. And my mom woke up and she's like, what is all the fuss about? And basically I told him that I seen my uncle and my mom started crying. My grandma started crying. And my mom told my grandma that she never told me of the situation that happened for me to even know that that uncle passed away. So that was kind of like my paranormal moment in life. And I've had a couple others, but that one was the most detailed and really hard to explain if that was not the ghost of my uncle saying goodbye. I don't know what it was. So hopefully that answered your question. It was really long winded and I'm sorry about that. Question two, can you show your viewer sub percentage again? Me and my wife watch every day hoping to see it go up. My wife is wondering what you do for a living. Thanks for the videos and keep up the great work. Hey, I appreciate that. And yeah, let me pull up the percentage here. I actually have a screenshot of it just today. My percentage to the people that are subscribed is 33.2%, which is a much higher than what it was when you were watching it. 
and the people that are not subscribed it's 66 percent but they're still viewing my content pretty active so I, i'm glad that you really enjoy the chart because i'm a really big fan of analytics and this is like one of the things that i keep to myself because i thought it was annoying people but it's really cool to see these type of comments of people wanting to see the chart because it is a pretty cool thing and i appreciate you wanting to see it and as far as what i do for a living i don't want to get too personal into it because it is personal business uh, I do work in the aviation industry. I kind of work on airplanes and things like that, just to keep it very simplified. And hopefully one day, maybe even YouTube for a job as well. That would be pretty cool. Thanks for the question. All right, next question. I know you don't talk about religion much, but do you believe that there's a spiritual realm? And if yes, do you think the veil is thinning? Thanks, brother. Much love, Jake. Well, Jake, excellent question. As far as I know, I don't really talk about religion much. It's not because I'm not religious. This universe is way too intricate for there not to be a main creator or creators of it, whether that's a god or some other higher being of some sort, I don't know. But I never want to rule out religion and I never want to rule out a spiritual realm because I do believe that there is multiple realms towards spirituality and not just spirituality either there's other realms in general for different life forms and things that we can't even comprehend i'm pretty certain that there's got to be something out there in that nature and we may cross over into that realm when we pass away and that's what gives us that feeling of being in heaven or hell or if you've heard my theories about DMT when we die, I do believe that we release DMT when we die, and that's what sends us off to heaven or hell, which could also be another one of these forms of spiritual realms. So hopefully to answer your question, do I believe in a spiritual realm? Yes, but not in the biblical sense as there being a God or things like that, because honestly, I really don't know. There could be multiple realms with, with beings of high power. And do I think that the veil is thinning? No, I do not. I think that because I'm on social media so much that sometimes I can get the feeling as though maybe the veil is thinning, but in reality, I think it's pretty much been the same since it's been a long time ago, back in the 50s probably when people thought that the veil was thinning, to be honest. So hopefully those could answer your questions. Thanks for the comment. All right, next question. Do you believe in dragons? I read an article in my news app under the science section about a dragon-like discovering the team discovered a school bus-sized creature that had wings and sacs for air, not lungs. So follow me here. If it has a flame source and could blow high pressure wind out, maybe it just seemed like they were fire breathing. Just a thought. Pretty good question and a really good thought. Do I believe in dragons? I definitely think that dragons or some form of creature that we classified as a dragon back in the day probably did exist. Just like if there were dinosaurs, those dinosaurs were probably the so-called dragons in that civilization's day. A T-Rex could easily be identified as a dragon to someone that doesn't know what a T-Rex is. Being that dinosaurs as a coined phrase nowadays we know what a dinosaur is but back in the day no one would have known what a t-rex was they would have had a totally different name for that creature which also makes me want to say that i don't know if i necessarily believe in dinosaurs being as old as some of the scientists say dinosaurs really are they could easily for me be a few thousand years old and not even millions of years but that's a theory for another day hopefully that answered your question though Next question, how did you get started doing conspiracy theory videos? Great question. I got started doing these types of videos because it's really fun to do. Before I was doing conspiracy videos, I was doing music reaction videos where I was reacting to music such as hip hop or different other types of artists in general. I was just listening to music, giving my input and reacting to them. And then one day I just was scrolling through my phone and I was like, why am I not reacting to this type of content? I really enjoy reacting to creepy videos and that's initially where it started was kind of ghost on camera type videos. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna throw some of these out on YouTube, see how well they do and they did pretty well. So I kind of stuck with that from there and then it turned into the conspiracy realm where it's just about conspiracy theories and creepy videos and things like that. So it kind of just fell in that line. 
from what I was doing in the past because before I was even reacting to music, I was making music and uploading it to YouTube. And before then, I was playing video games and uploading it to YouTube. I've been on YouTube for a long time. This channel is kind of a new channel in comparison to some of my channels that are 17 to 18 years old. Hopefully that answered your question. It was a little long-winded, but to sum it up, I was just scrolling on TikTok looking at videos, and I'm like, man, you know, I should really start reacting to these videos. And it turns out there's other people doing it, so why not follow along and do what I enjoy doing, you know? All right, last question. What's your favorite movie slash anime slash manga? Great question. Pretty easy question for me to answer because this falls within the realm of things that I really enjoy. Movie, that's the toughest one. I'd have to say a favorite movie might have to be Lord of the Rings, but I could sit down and watch a Lord of the Ring movie through and through and enjoy every second of it. As far as anime, Death Note. Death Note is my all time favorite anime. Now I do have other favorite animes, but as far as an anime goes, Death Note takes the cake for me. And for the manga, I would have to pick, I would have to pick Neon Genesis. It's a really good mech series. That's probably my favorite manga, to be honest. There's a number of other ones, but that one's probably my all time favorite. Thanks for the question. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. As always, if you found any of the clips that we watched today interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.